Hello. Thought I'd uh, do a new video here on uh, Got Friends uh, F4F Wildcat Paint Kit, uh, and and kind of just a um, uh, uh, a general question and answer type thing um, for. This is mostly for folks that aren't that familiar with uh, Blender, but if you're really experienced, uh, you might find some new things here. Um, anyway, uh, there were some issues that uh, were presented and talked about, and then I've gotten a few emails and questions, uh, so I, I thought I'd try to answer those here. Um, this is when you open up the paint kit for... Uh, the the uh, Wildcat, you're going to present it with uh, these folders and a README. Now, it's really important that you open this README up and read everything in here. It explains how to use this paint kit um, and explains a few things. Uh, there's a few peculiarities here that involves the uh, drop tanks. So uh, make sure you read this and follow the instructions on here. Um, you're given these folders blender model and that's going to contain the blender file uh, that uh, gives you the 3d uh, model of the aircraft to paint on you're also given a community template and this template is complete uh, it's got everything that you need to set up uh, your delivery uh, name it uh, the way you want, uh, which is basically everything where it says template is getting changed. Um, you're going into the sim objects, into airplanes, and um, this will be your temp, uh, your texture files, um, and the aircraft CFG, uh, and and it's very well explained in here what things that you need to change and where them. Where, uh, and where they are. It's very important that you follow the instructions. If it says do not touch below this line, huh, might be a good idea not to. And you really don't have to, unless let's say that you're you're building a special panel and, and you want uh, all that stuff that's in the panel and you've got a special panel file that you add, need to add those textures, then uh, you might come down here and, and do this. But then again, you need to check it fully to make sure it doesn't affect the model somehow because it what happens is you throw it up on the internet uh, into uh, flight sim.2 and somebody downloads it and say hey the panel doesn't work next thing or there's a whole flood of questions that get asked to the uh, got friends group and um, when it just boiled down to uh, <laughs> maybe you didn't follow instructions and I've done that before myself so uh, just something to keep in mind uh, we're uh, basically uh, you're going to be replacing these files uh, with yours that you've painted uh, and you'll notice that they're in DDS format they say png.dds here um, don't mess with these flag things they're they're important to flight simulator and explains to that setup where to place things you're just basically going to be uh, messing with these files um, if you are working in 2D or you're uh, in Blender here, you're going to be working on what's called PNG files, and I'll show that here in a minute. They have to be converted back to PNGs uh, or from PNGs to DDS. Uh, you can do that through uh, a, a free program called Paint.net. Uh, very easy to use. Uh, you can also you do it in Photoshop uh, if you use Photoshop. I'm not sure if you can do that in GIMP or not. I, I GIMP's not my program. Uh, some people use it exclusively. So uh, those are some of your options. Um, when you do make all your changes and, you, and you're ready to go and you've saved all your files then you need to come back here and, and use this MS layout generator and that's pretty simple of just grabbing this layout right here and dragging it down on top of that generator and since this is the first time that I'm using this it's going to be open with and it's pretty automatic hey, it, it's done it did its thing um, and then you can place that template if you've renamed it or whatever but into Flight Simulator and use it. Uh, the Images folder uh, contains a full set of 
DDS files that are already converted and uh, give you the, the black metal, the white aluminum, <coughs> um, which is, is the UVs are set up to give you an aluminum effect. Uh, it's kind of semi-polished, something you might see coming out of a factory. It has a, um, a special gray texturing to uh, add to that effect. The white gloss is just it. The aircraft is uh, white and it's got a gloss finish. Uh, if I open up the um, fuselage here, and it should open in Photoshop, which is what I use pretty exclusively. Um, and this is what you'll be presented with on that texture file. If you'll notice, it has all the grunge work and shadowing and stuff and shading where it needs to be. Um, there are ways uh, where you can use this file and um, you can pick up all that stuff on a, on a, in, on a color change. Uh, that's, I've got plenty of uh, YouTube videos out there on how to do that. Uh, uh, just do a search on AirPack1 uh, on YouTube and you'll find all my videos. Also, uh, check out Easy Rider. Uh, he has a whole series of videos on using paint.net uh, and there's uh, various videos scattered across the internet on how to use various programs like GIMP and so forth. So do check that out. Anyways, I'm going to close this out. Um, <clears throat> these DDS files could be, you could take these complete file set, is, let's say that you want to just this black or just this aluminum you could take these and swap them out in um, that uh, uh, let's see go back up here into this template folder and uh, name rename it and put those directly into um, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator without changing a whole lot and use that uh, I've done that and it works very well <clears throat> You're also given a folder full of UV maps. Uh, they've uh, the uh, version two added this uh, uh, decals template. Um, some other fixes were done and 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 replaced in here. But these UV maps um, are used to select parts for painting individual parts. Um, I'll show those later on. They. They're fairly accurate. Uh, there is some issues in places with the UV maps, and I'll show you that in, in Blender here in a minute. So, uh, that, but they're very good tools for selecting parts. Um, let's see, I'm gonna open one of these, open up with Photoshop. Let's go to the fuselage. Um, so this is the UV map uh, I've got on a particular layer. Um, I have my selection tool selected, and I also have a high tolerance. Uh, I'm, in fact, I might even take that up to uh, 75, go up to 100 if you want. Oh, darn it. 75 never works when you want it to. And if I click on this, you'll see the little marching ants. Might be a little hard to see here. Um, let me go full screen on this and bring that up you see the marching ants all along and in and, uh, I've, I've selected that gray area i might take and press down my shift key and double click it two or three times to make sure i get everything and i could go edit and copy i'm just for the sake of showing this um i'm going to do a new layer or actually a new file i'm not even going to name it i'll just open it uh, it figures. Um, let's see, and undo. No, it's not gonna let me do that. Let's just remove this. What did I do? I'm gonna close it. File, new. Uh, let's go down here to 4096 by 4096. There we go. This is the texture that. Uh, it's the the stuff is coming from so you want to keep make sure that they're same um, And then what I'm going to do edit and uh, I'll do it just a paste 
<clears throat> you should do a paste in place that makes sure it's in the same spot but I'm just wanting to show you this now I have just that part and I could use that to paint on I could do a new layer um, and select everything outside of this do a reverse and then just paint that whole fuselage or I could just select it um, let's do this I want to make sure I get inside of here also shift select that hole there might be a little hole right there I'm gonna make sure I select that also and go back out and you see if I go and do a uh, fill right now if the whole, everything on the outside fills I don't want that so uh, and undo if I do a um, select inverse now I have just this item filled and I know I've got everything filled up so now I could do a, a fill again and it should be just that few slide side just like so is now filled um, I could also take uh, a paintbrush at this point in 2d and um, let's see let's get a bigger swash here go to maybe this brown and I could just paint across here and so that's how that works see if I go outside of it I'm not painting on anything because I, I only have that fuselage selected so that's kind of how that works uh, and if that's your mode of what you like to paint in and you can certainly do that alignment gets to be an issue when you're doing stuff like stripes and things like that so anyway hopefully that helps you there it's a good way of selecting parts. Um, so that's the, the UVs. The important thing you need here is the PNGs. And if you're going to, when you open up in Blender and you want to select one of these models in here to start with, then you'd go to these PNG files and then select that, that whole file in Direct Blender. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. But this gives you all the, the, um, files that are required to do this particular livery all right now I'm gonna go back up here to blender model and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the blender model now I had some questions um, that was asking me uh, when you open this up um, you're presented with this gray kind of um, model with no textures and stuff on it right now blender is just seeing the model it's not seeing any textures at all and if i want to select something that's already created for me um i'm going to go up here to file and i'll go down here to ex um, extended data and at the very bottom it says find missing files click on that i need to grab and go up one level on the files Go over to images, click on that, go to PNGs, and I can select any one of these four right now. If I had something in my own in here that I created and had another, another folder and I wanted to go work on that, then I'd have another folder in here with those PNGs in it. Let's, for the sake of, uh, let's go to the black. If I open this up, these are all the files that encompass that library, and they're all in PNG. If I go find missing files, it should, within a couple of seconds, I should see something come up here, but I'm not going to because I've selected the raw model. Now, up here in the right-hand corner of this window, there are a set of globes here. This first one, if you click on it, it gives you what's called a wireframe. That's all you're going to see is the wild wire frame. If I go to the next one, it's showing me just the raw model. Yet I have a texture file over here. On the, if you look over on the left side, there's a texture file seeing colors, but I'm not seeing anything over here. That's because I haven't selected any of the shading. This next block over here is your viewport shading. If I click on that, it'll take a second, but it should populate this model with those textures there it is so now I'm seeing the textures along with all the effects that give me my shine uh, also gives me my my indentations and my cracks and scratches and so forth and 
what's happened is let me go back uh, let's see if I can do this just just I want to check myself I'm going to edit undo or I can go control Z um, see what happens it's going to take a little bit here control Z there we go well, I'm going to go back to here and I'll go to shading and see what I have uh, it's there but it's not okay I didn't know if that would show up or not so I'll go back here to layout I'm going to go back to this shader I need to go and select um, let's go to the white one this time I'll do a different one model let's go up and I'll go to the uh, how about aluminum that looks pretty cool let's check out the aluminum one and now everything's populated I'll find missing and because I have this center globe uh, this shader globe it should give me my textures on is when when the textures pop over here there we go we there's the alum all aluminum okay so these are the textures that uh, uh, t uh, 270 ink has presented uh, in this particular kit and uh, it's about what you might see coming out of a factory ready to go uh, uh, test fly before they do any painting on it um, if I click back on here you see I go back to this kind of dull that's that's the model so uh, I don't mess with this other one here if you notice it gets kind of weird because I don't have any global uh, you can set up a, a, a global uh, viewing of this so that it looks very similar if I go to the shading module you see this background here uh, that's how that would appear uh, I'm going to go back to my texture paint and take that back down I just wanted to uh, identify that as an issue because uh, some folks was wondering well when I go into layout mode I don't see any of my textures so um, that's that's how these these work up here all right um i'm gonna go back while let's see let's go control z see how much i gotta get to back out of this i'll just go control z a few times and see if it takes me back it should yeah there we go one more z See if it takes me all the way back. It may not. Let's go back to here. That's because I've got that selected. And uh, just bear with me here. Uh, let's see. Let's texture paint layout there we go clear that all up all right now I'm starting out here raw um if i take an interest in an aircraft that i know that i'm going to want to spend some time painting um i personally i don't use the uvs uh i i do my i select my own and make my own selection plates um let me go into i'm going to select a few slides and I'm going to go up here to texture paint and it's all pink because there are no textures if you go down here to the UV map the texture plate it's showing the UVs and if I scroll over here to the far right hand side of this scroll bar uh, on the um, the texture window there is uh, a couple of things here this looks like two uh, overlapping circles if you click on that drop down arrow it says display texture paint UVs and that's what's being displayed is the UVs if I click off of that I got nothing so if I come over here and I look at um, there's no textures it's showing me textures PNGs uh, but there's actually no painted textures that I've selected if I add a new base and um, this texture sets work in 40 4096 by 4096 so I'm going to take and set this up my texture as 4096 down here 
worked out at 4096. Now I'm making a complete new texture plate. I like to go to pure white. So if I click on the color right here and uh, go up here and I'm just going to take on the far right hand in the scroll bar. I'm going to put the zero all the way to the top so I have a pure white. And that's how it should look here in the values. You can enter values too if you want to do it that way. And I'm going to click OK. Now the fuselage has gone to white and my texture plate has gone to white. I can also bring back my UVs if I want to and it's going to show all the UVs here. Okay. Now, um, the, the items here uh, that is, uh, they aren't selected would be the decals um, on this model. So what I'm going to do now is, and I don't have the wings selected or none of these other parts, that's why they're pink. I only have the fuselage base color. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down here to the green. I'll get a nice bright green. I'm going to change my, I should have done that first. I'm going to change to the bucket fill. Get a nice bright green down here. And I'm going to simply click on the few slides. Alright, I'm going to double click a few times to make sure that I get a complete fill. Every single part that's involved with that few slides is now filled. If I go over here to the UVs and take a look at my UVs and get up real close, you'll notice that some of these UVs, that fill extends past the borderline of those UVs. Uh, that can cause you some issues uh, if you just select the UVs and go into a 2D painting program. So just, just make note of that 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 could be an issue and you have to go into blender and adjust those things some of these are uh, extreme and some of them are not and they're not always even um, I've also had issues uh, where like right in here uh, there's some items that are missing now are those supposed to be missing or is it just that it's not getting filled for some reason little areas around it you might want to check on and this one even goes into the border here and it's not quite filled so these are things that you want to look at um, you go back in here and, and click on this a few more times and see if that changes and uh, oh it did change so I didn't get a complete fill so um, I, I hope that sheds a little light on it Sometimes they go way out here like like you see here and it's not necessary. You can play around with it and see what you need to adjust. But what I like to do is I have this plate and now I can go and save this plate. I'm going to turn off the UVs so you're not seeing those. And this is a complete texture paint, paint, bleh, plate for the fuselage. Now, when you're saving out of here, if you don't already know this, if you go up here to File and go Save or Save As, you are going to save the state that Blender in is in at the current time, which is whatever position you have the model in, whatever is on this play over here, anything you've, you've done to any of the windows, you're going to save that right now. And you'll next time you open it up, you're gonna go, oh, what the heck? Why is my model in that position? Why am I not starting off? Well, that's why. That's because you saved the state, but you did not save this texture plate. By saving here using the file, you don't save any of that. You just save the state that the mo the that Blender is in at that time that you saved it. All your select selections, all of your settings. It all saves that information, but not this file. In order to save this file, you have to go here to where it says image. There is an asterisk which tells me that this image file has not been saved. If I go to save image, save as, I rarely ever just do a save. I go save as, I will go point out my desktop and save this to my desktop. Now if I reduce this and go look at my desktop, I now have that texture file saved on my desktop. And I can pull this into Photoshop or GIMP or whatever program I want and use that to paint on or as a selection tool. Now this isn't going to 
give you a whole lot of information of what parts connect where and stuff or or if you even need to worry about painting on a particular thing it just gives you just like a UV it gives you a complete set of textures ready to paint on uh, close that out let me go back into my blender file now generally what I will do um, I'm gonna Control Z and try to escape out of all this. So bear with me again. I like using Control Z a lot. It's simplest, I suppose, just to hit the X and, and get out of the program. Because it takes, especially when you're filming something, it takes forever for stuff to, to work. Alright, I should be completely back to square one. Yep, we're back to square one. Alright. Now, you have an infinite number of times that you can download this paint kit from Got Friends, is, is the best I know or are aware of. So I have my my paint kit, and I've still got it in its zip form, so I can start it over again. I'm going to take this paint kit at this time, and I'm going to go up here to Layout. I will select on the fuselage. I want to go into modeling. If you'll notice, all these little skeleton here, that is what I have selected, which is the fuselage. And it is completely grouped. If I go here to select, and it'll notice I'm in edit mode, I'm going to select all. It highlights that entire fuselage. At this point, if I right click on the screen, and go down here to where it says separate I can separate by material or I can separate by loose parts in this particular case um, the only really time you would need to use the separate by materials is if the entire uh, aircraft is grouped so if I clicked on this selected all everything on this in this window would be highlighted like it is here now in this particular case just the fuselage so I know that just that fuselage is is grouped and I want to separate that into loose parts so I'm gonna click on that now you notice it changed now I've got borders around all these different parts and I click off here if I just click come on nothing is cooperating for me here I'll go back to object there we go back to object mode you it right click off on the screen now if I could click on an individual part on that fuselage you'll notice that now I have just the individual parts okay anywhere I click on this fuselage I get individual parts now if I click on the wings the wings are grouped so I'd have to do the same thing to the wings. I'd have to go to that. If I go here to these parts, the same thing, I'd have to do the same thing. Click on that and, and separate them. But And I'm not even interested in painting on this stuff. So what I can do since I'm in object mode is I can click on that and I can hit H and hide it. It's no longer, since I'm not painting on it, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's not gone I didn't delete it I just hit it and you can bring that back in there are commands like control uh, uh, H will bring bring things back stuff like that so but uh, that's all in learning the commands uh, of blender and those are different videos so anyways I now have all this separated into individual parts so what I can do now is I can click on this few slides and I can go into texture paint and I can get a new plate base color again I haven't exited out of here so it still remembers my uh, the, my sizing for my texture plate uh, and I just want to check the color and I want to raise that up here I'm going to go OK now I've got this selected and if I go say I select the blue and click on it now just and I three or four times now just the fuselage sides here and that's what I got now if I want to 
Uh, I'll go to layout. I'm going to select on the front area and I'll go back to texture paint. Let's choose another color and I'll click on that. Now you see on the plate I'm, I've got different parts of the fuselage on this plate so I can identify them really easily. Same thing um, I will go back into my layout, uh, select these panels here. One, of course, now that you got all this separated, you gotta you select this stuff one at a time. Go back to texture paint, get another color, say red, and click on anywhere's on the screen. Now those parts are filled, um, and you can even go further if you want. If you want to identify for painting purposes, let's say you're going to do designs, you could just go here and grab the black. Uh, I'll go back to the brush, grab the black, and get down to a really small, and I could draw me an arrow, and that shows me the direction of that panel, and I could even go and put a T up here to indicate the top panel. Um, I, and I could level if I want to go in that much detail. I go to every one of these and do that kind of detail. So um, that just give me an idea of the things that you can do. Now, what I'm going to do again, I'm not going to save the file. That that'll destroy all of my settings. I will go to image, and I'm going to save that image as. And I've already got that image on my desktop. So let's say that I wanted to save this as something else. I could just rename this, add into um, parts. Okay. Save as and save that to the desktop. Now, not only do I have all of the parts, I have separated parts that I know are you know make up the different components so it's a little easier to select those individual things and let's say that instead of having these arrows in T I have alignment tick marks so I could do a tick mark on here matching uh, say a tick mark here on the fuselage uh, with a, some kind of a weird color and that would help me if I was a 2D painter align things up when I'm in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever it is that you're using so anyway, I hope that gives you an idea and helps you there. It also shows you that um, the UV maps are great for quick selecting stuff, but they can create issues if you're a 2D painter and that's all you paint in is 2D. Uh, I paint in both. I use uh, Blender 3 uh, and I paint in Blender and, and I also use uh, Photoshop and that's my, my thing of choice. So I'm going to close this. Uh, I don't really need to do that anymore, so let's go back into Blender. Um, I'm just going to exit Blender and not save anything. Alright. So, let's open Blender back up again. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this to here. Let's say that I wanted this like this, and, and I wanted to set this up so that I, I always saw this one every time I opened up. I've selected absolutely nothing else. Just changed this. Now, I could go to File and Save, uh, Save As, and it's telling me Wildcat Paint Kit Version 2 Blend. Okay, that's the paint kit. If I save this now, save as, and I'm going to close this, now I have a, a file here indicating that there's some setup changes to this paint kit. Now if I open this paint kit up, there it is. Exactly the way I had it set up so that this is the way I wanted to open up. I don't have to keep doing this. Uh, you could do some other things if you wanted. You could go into texture paint and you could come over here and let's say that you always use, um, come on, get up here. You always use no uh, a clean fall off and you always use line instead of space. Bring this back out here. 
I could move this window over big so I have a little bit bigger so forth you could center this in there maybe get that a little bit bigger center that okay you get the idea now I could go back over to um, I'm gonna take it back to layout so that I'm always getting a layout I could center this a little bit I could raise this up a little bit if I want to and then again file and I'm gonna save as save now if I close this out I go back into the paint kit I'll open it back up again that's there if I go to texture paint that's there the way I set it up so that give you that that shows you that by saving from this file right here that's what you're changing I I save nothing else and I I really haven't damaged this paint kit because it's still fully functional I could go back here to layout I could go to file uh, external data find missing files I'm gonna go up here to my images PNGs uh, let's go with the uh, black metal and yes shouldn't take but a second here to to populate and I should get everything that I need there it is everything that I need okay so I hope that helps you uh, with with those questions and uh, some of the other things that I've shown you here. Um, I, I get asked what happens if I don't, you know, change those things out. I'm going to exit out of here. Don't save. Um, I'm going to take my paint kit and I'm going to completely remove it, delete it. Let's see. Can't action. Oh, because I got stuff going. Crap. All right. It's not going to let me do that. I'm not sure why. Maybe because I'm still active in this video. All right. Um, let's see if I can move here. Will it allow me? Nope. The folder or file this action can't be completed because I'm filming probably. It's not going to let me do that. All right. Well, <coughs> That's a problem that I would have. Anyway, I, I hope this shows you, uh, you know, what can be done, what can't be done. Let me open this back up again. I thought I had it completely closed out. All right. Let's see this if this works. I'm going to go back to here. All right. I was asked what happens um, if you don't select the PNGs someone asked me in that situation if I go in here to file external data uh, I'm gonna find missing files let's go up here to the blender model uh, not blender model I'm sorry images uh, DDS and let's go to that black metal uh, while all the files are coming up here the only ones that are visible are the actual texture plates and it looks cool if I go find missing, here's what happens. Ah, I lost it. Let's do it again. Find external data. Find the missing files. Find. Do you see all those errors? That's that's what you get. You'll get a whole bunch of errors. And that's Blender telling me that I can't find the files because they are not in the proper format they need to be in a PNG and not DDS and what you're doing is you're telling it to open up those DDS files and it don't understand how to do that so anytime that you get this that's the issue alright let me close this out I realize that this video is getting long I just want to cover one more thing here and I want to try to do this I hopefully it will work um, some of you are saying, well, uh, how do I get into the cockpit? What if I want to do stuff in the cockpit? Well, what you're going to have to do at, to get into the cockpit is you're going to have to fresh start a blender um, clean with, you know, it's not pointing toward, you're not activating a blender file. 
So uh, this is a 4.0 alpha. Don't bother with it. It, it still should work. I'm just I like uh, playing with uh, alphas and and seeing what's new. It's not work. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff that's on the screen here. I just bit a block around it, deleted it. I want to go to file. I'm going to go down here to import. Now I already have these tools, which is the MSF GLTF, and I have the uh, the GLTF 2.1 One of these works. What I'm going to do, if I'm not mistaken, it's the MS that I have to use. Uh, I will go to where I've got. Uh, my community folder, I'm going to go down to aircraft, I will go to the got, uh, got friends F4F Wildcat, open that up, and I'm going to go over here to the sim objects, to the airplanes, darn it, and to the model, alright, now if you see I have an external GLTF and I have an internal if you click, I hope this works, onto here and then import that, it'll take it a few seconds. But there's what you get. There is the cockpit. Okay. That is your model ready to go and paint. Um, what you can do at this point now is if you, this something that you want to uh, do a lot is paint inside this cockpit and, and change things around, make them look something the way you want it to. At this point, you can set this up the way you want it, get your windows set up, play with that, um, and then go up to the file, and I'm going to do a save as. And I'll go to the desk. I'll go to desktop, and it says untitled. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go F four F just to be simple. Uh, put a dash in there, and I'm going to go uh, cockpit. Okay, I'm going to save it to my desktop. Save. All right. So I can close this out. And fingers crossed there is my cockpit now I should be able to add it right but I won't even try right now you probably put it up into your got friends folder and it will be there uh, when I should be able to click on this and it should come up and there's my cockpit okay so same principle I'm gonna click on the seat let's go to texture paint uh, I haven't looked in, in to make sure that it's in the same format, but it should be if I go here to new base color, uh, I'm going to go 4096 by 4096. Uh, same thing, I will change it, make sure it's all white. I want it pure white. I'm going to go OK, and then if I go to, let's see, do I have it out here? Let's see. Let's go to Layout. OK, click on your texture paint. All right, I don't have, uh, let's go to the paint module. Uh, I didn't set up my brushes. Let's go here and select the paint bucket, and I should be able to click on that. And I select it. There we go. There we go. All right. Okay. I did. So I didn't take the time to set up all my windows, so I didn't have my icons over here for my my painting tools. Anyways. You see, now I have the seat, and the seat's on a separate little layer. I could pull that layer out and work on this, uh, use it in 2D, or I can I can go into it right here and paint it. Uh, I can at this point if I wanted to. Let's go out to layout and see what happens if I hide this. Hide. Uh, there we go. I can hide these, or I can just completely remove that. Edit. Undo. 
Uh, remove that. I can hide these goodies since I'm not doing anything with them. They'll give me a little bit better access to the cockpit and look around. I haven't deleted that stuff. I just hid that. It's all hidden. So uh, it gives me a little bit better uh, availability to get in. You see how much detail that's been put in here, even even all this stuff back in here. So that's the entire cockpit. Just showing you what the possibility are, what you can do. Um, anyways, I hope that helps. I'm going to exit out of here. I don't. I'm not going to mess with that anymore and save it. So I hope I answered the questions that uh, some folks had and. Uh, and how I kind of do things, and uh, this is an awesome paint kit, and, and I hope you all get a lot of use out of it, and, and a big appreciation to Got Friends and, and their attention to detail, and, and also their willingness to share all this stuff with us, okay? Uh, talk to you later. I know this has gone long, but I uh, hope this works for you. Adios.